Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, August 20th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here is a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Mexican cartels in control of U.S. territory. And you've got mail. Hillary campaign admits classified material was on their private server. Then, we take a look at the big business of anchor babies. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. You want me to say that? Okay, I said, no, I'll use the word anchor baby. Excuse me. I'll use the word anchor baby. Where did the term anchor baby? That's an offensive term. People find that. Uh, you mean it's not politically correct and yet everybody uses it? I say, so you know what? Give me a different term. Give me a different term. What else would you like to say? The American born child of an undocumented immigrant. Oh, you want me to say that? Okay, I said, no, I'll use the word anchor baby. Excuse me. I'll use the word anchor baby. Well, that was the Donald doubling down on his non-PC campaign promise. He wants to end birthright citizenship as this is the biggest magnet for illegal immigration. Now, of course, Trump's idea, it's hardly anything new to politics or Congress. Watchdog groups have said that up to 400,000 children are born in the U.S. to illegal immigrants each year. If they are born on U.S. soil, they are entitled to citizenship under an interpretation of the 14th Amendment. And that is what uh, Donald Trump is trying to argue against, is that interpretation is wrong. That's where this whole fuzziness of the anchor baby thing comes in. Uh, children of non-citizens who are born here can petition for legal status for their parents when they turn 21, which is what critics of the law say provides incentive for people to try to cross illegally into the U.S., in order to give birth, and then they can have those children anchor the family in when they return. So there is legislation, it's stalled in Congress, and it would close a loophole in the 14th Amendment by clarifying that birthright citizenship is only given to the children of U.S. citizens and legal resident aliens. So it only makes sense, but of course, the left is courting voters who are adamantly against closing this loophole. So the left has basically attacked this idea of ending birthright citizenship in the United States. They're calling it extreme. That is extreme. So globally, the U.S. is only one of a few countries that actually grant uh, automatic citizenship at birth to illegal immigrants. The U.S. and Canada are the only two developed nations that grant automatic citizenship at birth to the children of illegal and temporary immigrants. So other countries have put an end to birthright citizenship, including Ireland, which ended automatic birthright citizenship in 2004 because of birth tourism. And obviously birth tourism is something that is booming here in the United States. Uh, an immigration attorney tells Breitbart News that Anchor Babies is now big money in the US. It's a very big business. Alex Jones has talked about this for years, talked about how they bring people over, put them up in hotels. Um, and, and these businesses aren't targeting poor immigrant mothers who are coming across the southern border. They're targeting wealthy foreigners from countries like China and Russia. And at times, they make up to $99,000 per sale. And this is completely legal. They target these mothers. They bring them over here, usually in their second trimester. They put them up in hotels. Uh, they give them prenatal care. And, you know, they're not, obviously not going to confirm this. But the doctors are working with these agencies because they're getting paid cash. They're not, you know, in taking Obamacare or anything like that. So they're being paid in cash. And then these mothers hang out until they give birth. And now their kids are U.S. citizens. And so then if they go back to their, their countries, they can come back here in about 18, 20 years and go to college here. So that's typically why this seems to be such an appealing thing. But nobody is really harping at any of the other countries who do not grant birthright citizenship. They're not saying that they are anti-immigrant. Um, and really, it's simple. Children of illegals and tourists should not be granted automatic citizenship. Children of permanent residents or green card holders should be the ones to have that privilege. That is a very sensible argument. Now, Senator Rand Paul actually co-sponsored a constitutional amendment in 2011 to put an end to birthright citizenship. You know, that's anyone that comes here and gives birth on U.S. soil could now be 
be a citizen, he told NBC News that today's circumstances still warrant that move. And he said, if you have an open border, you can't have birthright citizenship. So Paul has taken a break from the campaign trail to perform pro bono eye surgeries in Haiti. And he took a moment to weigh in on America's obsession with the politically incorrect Trump. The media, because it's either popular or controversial, has given more attention to one person that's running than everybody else combined because times he's 10. The polls. Well, it's sort of cart and all, you know, horse in the cart there a little bit. Um, he was doing he was doing a little bit, but then he got probably a billion dollars worth of free advertising. He's on every channel all the time, and people have gone gaga over something. And really, I've I've likened it to the emperor has no clothes. Well, remember yesterday when Hillary came out and said she wasn't wheeling and dealing in classified information on her server? Well, now her camp has come out today admitting that there was classified email uh, material on her server, but they say that this material became classified retroactively. She said that was done out of an abundance of caution by the U.S. intelligence agencies. A spokesman for Mrs. Clinton's campaign said, she was at worst a passive recipient of unwitting information that subsequently became deemed as classified. Oh, like we pointed out yesterday, as the uh, Secretary of State, she would have been the one to determine that material should be counted as classified. But come on, let's get real, out of an abundance of caution, this is the same State Department that did absolutely nothing to protect her emails after one of her um, confidants, Sidney Blumenthal, was hacked. That's how people first learned about her private email address in the first place. They didn't do anything at that point to protect her emails, nor is there any indication that the State Department was uh, in charge of any of the other devices that Clinton was using, like that famous BlackBerry. Um, they, none of those were issued by the State Department. So there wasn't an abundance of caution being used. So why all of a sudden does the establishment seem to be throwing Hillary Clinton under the bus? Well, Tosh Plumley was on the Alex Jones show today with an explanation. The reason that they're zeroing in on this dog and pony show and, uh, and the Trump and all this and stuff is simply for one reason, my opinion, and also documented. The Benghazi murder massacre was only because the ambassador found out about a very secret international gun running operation that it involved U.S. Stinger missiles, and he had the opportunity to purchase those Stinger missiles back to get them off of the, uh, uh, the international market. Uh, so he could buy those Stinger missiles back. This is classified information that I'm talking about. This is the kind of information that is in those skiffs. Now, he had an opportunity to buy that, that back. So they was told to stand down shortly after that, he's dead. The reason that she's being thrown out of the bus and the reason for this diversion is that they will not let us get into the fact that the ambassador had uncovered this a gun running operation and was asking the state U.S. State Department how he should handle it. What should he do with this information that he had received from on the ground, boots on the ground, informants, some of them American, some of them NATO. If you remember, NATO went into those Libyan bunkers to clear them out. Where did that? Where did that? Uh, where did those weapons go? And what were those weapons? This is what they don't want us to know. And you also okay. use the term "secret government." Uh, repeat that. Talk about the secret government and, and how it operates. Well, we have a segment, <laughs> and I don't want to get into conspiracy stuff and so on like that. But we have a situation that goes all the way back to, to before Kennedy. That has been gradually, I call it the American slow coup d'etat. We have a, a an element, uh, whether it be international, whether it be whatever, and I don't get into all that kind of stuff. But we have a, a, a situation that has been developing for years, a slow and gradual infiltration into the CIA, into uh, uh, various uh, political organizations. Uh, and it is like a secret government within itself. So it seems pretty clear that the establishment has set Clinton up to take the fall. Clinton for president in 2016, more like Hillary for prison.
My personal emails are my personal business. Hillary Clinton, the institutionalized politician and tool of the banking elite, refuses to back down from pure common sense and stop the careening train wreck that is her Democratic presidential campaign. We were in charge of it. You were the official in charge. Did you wipe the server? What, like with a cloth or something? I don't know. You know how it works digitally. Did you try to I, wipe the whole thing? I don't know how it works digitally at all. Trump on Clinton emails, it's a criminal problem. So th there becomes a point where whether Trump's good or bad, what he's doing is, as, as the number one media person in the country now, getting all this attention, he is destroying Hillary Clinton. Put, putting it over the top as all this comes out and then giving everybody cover to go after her. Because if you individually go after them, they come after you. But if everybody goes after them, they can be destroyed. And then that scares all the other crooks to not be so arrogant. It has now come to light that two of Hillary's top aides allegedly violated two national security laws by engaging in the transmission of classified information on a private email server. 18 U.S.C. Section 1924 outlaws the unauthorized removal and storage of classified information. Penalties may include fines and imprisonment of up to one year. In March, Army General David Petraeus was sentenced to two years probation and a $40,000 fine for violating this very statute after providing classified documents to his biographer, Paula Broadwell. 18 U.S. Code Section 793 covers national defense information and people who misuse it to injure the United States or benefit a foreign power. Those convicted of violating that law face fines and up to 10 years in prison. The Washington Free Beacon reports additionally the two Clinton aides, Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills, disregarded a federal judge's order this month requiring both to make sworn statements to the court that all government documents in their possession will be returned to federal officials, said Chris Farrell, director of investigations for Judicial Watch. Hillary's staff would have us all believe this is simply an administrative mishap. Regardless of the fact that her BlackBerry and private computer equipment weren't issued by the State Department, as she was acting as the Secretary of State of the United States of America. CNET senior editor Dan Ackerman explained, Anytime you're bringing your own equipment and using it for work purposes, it's not as secure as something that's actually issued by the company, i.e. the State Department. Because they take those laptops, for example, and they pre-configure them, they put their own software on them, tracking software, update software, and they distribute them. Jeffrey Sterling, a former CIA agent, was sentenced to 42 months in prison for leaking classified information to New York Times reporter James Risen in 2003, U.S. Attorney Dana Bonte said in a statement, For his own vindictive purposes, Jeffrey Sterling carelessly disclosed extremely valuable, highly classified information that he had taken an oath to keep secret. His attempt to leverage national security information for his own malicious reasons brought him to this sentence today. Hillary's classified emails were available to any hacker and thus available to the public or a foreign entity at any time. In comparison to convicted CIA agent Sterling, Hillary's hubris put national security in a far more precarious spot. If our national security laws apply to everyone, as they should, Hillary's arrest should be swift and her campaign of rampant deception terminated immediately. John Bound for Infowars.com. A whopping 22 people from America's two major political parties have thrown their hat in the ring for the 2016 presidential election. The question is, which one of these nuts do you want to vote for? Is America ready for D's nuts? Well, if the polls are any indication, a 15-year-old high school sophomore from Iowa, going by the moniker D's nuts, is polling better than most Republicans. In fact, D's nuts, who takes his name from a punk band, is the most popular independent candidate since Ross Perot, also known as Brady Olson. D's nuts says his mission is to give Americans an alternative to the two-party system in 2016. D's nuts is more popular than Fiorina, Huckabee, and Walker, and there's been no word from the candidates on how it feels being beaten by D's nuts in the polls. But if you had to choose between Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, or D's nuts, who would you vote for? Now we all know how this election is gonna play out. The new boss will be the same as the old boss, but at least in the end, you can say, don't blame me, I voted for D's nuts.
Leanne McAdoo for InfoWars.com. I'm Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com at Glenn Spencer's Ranch in Hereford, Arizona. We just now got back from the flight that he took us up on in a single-engine Cessna where he showed us what he promised. Mind-blowing stuff across our borders right now. We're going to show you the footage of what we saw and explain to you what it is, what Glenn's telling us it means, because he is the leading expert on the border in this area. He has been covering this for 22 years. All the stuff that he has predicted and said would happen has happened. Um, what you can see right behind me is a pretty, you know, regular size fence. And there's that here for a little bit. But once you get a few more miles up this way, what we saw was just crazy. What the Department of Homeland Security, what our government is telling you, they, they say that there's a fence up. So when they get in front of a press conference and they say something, they can feel good about themselves. They can feel like they're not lying. But their idea of this huge fence that's really going across our border is a lot like what you saw yesterday. It's so easy to step over. It is so easy to get through that without anybody knowing you. Once we got a few miles up the road right up here, when we were flying down, you get over this little mountain ravine, and you don't see anything at all. There's just open areas for miles. We flew for 30 minutes. There was not one Border Patrol vehicle in that area whatsoever. But one of the things we saw when we first took off was a brand new $30 million Border Patrol facility that they have here in Bisbee. This is just crazy. You know, what Glenn was telling me is that that $30 million could have been used to put up the fence that they're saying that they're going to have to support us, to help protect us from all the stuff that's happening. But they're not doing that. Instead, they're wasting our tax dollars on this fancy facility that doesn't even need to be there. It's ridiculous. And all you'll see for 30 minutes we saw just flying over, the, over Arizona and Mexico was just something literally waist high that you could just step over and you're home free. If that doesn't just blow your mind, I don't know what else can. Our government is purposely doing this right now. You know, we saw earlier a fence that they put up. They spend $3 million every mile to put up a fence. And all they did was raise it up, put the pins in. This stuff is everywhere. Anybody can come through. And people say, oh, that's racist to say something like that. No, no, no. No, it's not. Because you don't know who comes into Mexico. And then you don't know who comes from Mexico into our country. Because our borders aren't secure. You need to call people who are in charge. We need to get a hold of the people of the White House. We need to do something because this is horrible. The stories that we heard from the ranchers here are mind-blowing about the things they see, the people coming through, the smuggling. They use these little trenches and ravines that come through under the border and hide, and there's trees and stuff. You're not going to see that. They put up some fancy camera every now and then. The Border Patrol does. Half of them don't even work, and if they do, they can't see someone walking through that little area. And flying overhead, what we saw is it's so easy to have cover and concealment and never be seen by all this money they're wasting on these stupid cameras that don't do anything. We don't have enough Border Patrol on our borders. Sending a military out here is really not the answer. But we need to do something about it. You need to wake up, America. You need to start talking about this stuff, and we need to make a change because this crap going on out here is ridiculous, and it's got to stop. I'm Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com in Hereford, Arizona, right along the borderline fence through Glenn Spencer's backyard. This is the gentleman we spoke to the other day on the Alex Jones Show. As you can see, it's a pretty big fence and about 100 yards up there. Then it comes into this little fence right here. And what I'm going to show you is how easy it is if you're an illegal alien trying to come across a border or a drug smuggler to come into America. This right here is mind-blowing. Check this out. You come right over through this. You come over here. And ladies and gentlemen, I am in Mexico right now. This is it. That's how easy it was. There's nothing here to keep me from coming across into the country and flooding our streets with drugs and illegal aliens. This is what's going on right now. 
The Border Patrol is not doing anything. They're saying it's going to take another five years to even get some of this stuff fixed. And they've been saying that for a decade. This is crazy. This is stuff that the people in America need to look at. And this is something that we need to get fixed because we have to stop this illegal flood of aliens coming to our country right now. All right, now you can see this, the, the, the process to come back in to the U.S. is so easy. And this is what happens. They come through this fence. They bring their drugs. There's no border patrol anywhere around out in this area. And what happens is this is a wildlife refuge through here. For about 20 miles, there is no way the border patrol can even access this land unless they have absolute positive identity of a suspect coming across. So that means... 99% of the time, they have no idea these people are coming through. And what happens is these guys can just essentially walk all the way out here. And they're home free. Once they get past this area, this wildlife refuge through here, there's nothing that stops them from getting into our country. The Obama voters are now free to enter our country. And we are importing this poverty. But it's not just happening here on the border. This is happening everywhere. It's happening in Minnesota. It's been all over our country right now. But this is where it starts. And this is where we need to stop it. Stay tuned because for the next 36 hours, we will continue putting up reports, informing you on the situation down here at the border. I'm Joe Biggs on the front lines of battle for immigration with Infowars.com. All right, here we are about a mile up from where we just had a second ago. Now, what you can see here is a main traffic uh, route right through here for the smugglers. What they do is they pull up a 15-pack van. Now, this is probably, what, 12 feet high? What they do is they bring it up, stand on top. They have an I-beam to step down on, drop down to this beam, and then come into the country. And they're free. They're home free. Look at this. Right over here. There's a little barbed wire area that's easy to get through. Everybody's done it with some small little pliers. You can just cut right through and you're home free. Our government is wasting money building this fence. And all they're doing is giving them a spot to step and get over into the country. It's a beard. They're putting money. The, the Department of Homeland Security is saying, yeah, we have a fence. We have a fence. But yeah, look at it. I could climb over this. This is ridiculous. That, where's the security at? Where is a secure border that they tell us is up, but I have not seen yet? Continue watching our videos because we're going to keep giving you eye-opening, mind-blowing reports down here at the border. We are now 100 yards up the fence from where we were just at a second ago where you saw the wide parts open. Now look, this is an area that has been cut down by the cartels. It was just repaired on 3-14-14 and it was cut open by the cartels on 10 29 13. now let me show you real quick what happens what they do is there's a smuggling route right back here a truck can get through they drive up here and they bring acetylene gas torches up here they cut through this huge fence right here make it big enough for the truck to get through they cut through these i beams with a torch and then take that down and then what they have is a complete open route into our country to smuggle drugs. This is not by accident. This is a design by the Obama administration and not only just them, our entire government as a whole has a hand in this. The Fast and Furious, all these things are happening. We make money getting their drugs. We sell them weapons. This is a huge issue that needs to be looked at. It's not just the illegals coming through. It's the drugs flooding our borders to help dumb our people down, essentially. I mean, this is a, a mind-blowing thing that's happening out here, and we just need more people in America to care about this and watch what's going on and do something about it. I'm Joe Biggs with more reports coming up on Infowars.com. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com in Cochise County, Arizona with Glenn Spencer. Now, we are right on the border, as you can see, uh, from what Glenn told me a second ago, they spent about $3 million every mile or so to build this fence, and yet they have left this completely wide open. Now tell me why this happens. Well, we're known for monsoons between really July, August, September. We have heavy rains, and uh, what they've done here, uh, because this is a wash, this is a low spot, uh, what they've done is they've cut the holes in the fence and put in these gates and raised them up so the, wa the water can come through. 
Now, these are up, I don't know, usually two or th three months out of the year. Uh, as you can see, you could just walk right through. Three million dollars was spent on this section and it is completely left wide open. I mean, right here they have a lock and you can tell that someone goes through the trouble to bring a crane out here, not a crane, but a forklift, lift these up and lock these completely in. Yeah, this and it's is, as this easy is, as yeah, walking in. That's right, you're right. And yeah. you can see footprints over here where people were just right here the other side and trash, water bottles and that coming through. It's obvious what's going on. We'll continue informing you on what's going on out here at the border. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com. Joining me now is Joe Biggs. Now, Joe, what did you really think about that today when Drudge Report had their big headlines, America does not have operational control of U.S. territory? Were you surprised? No, not really. I mean, I've been to the area where they were talking to where they took uh, Ben Carson out and showed him around. It's in between Hereford, Arizona and Naco. And in that area, it's very wide open, very few homes, and a lot of it's BLM, uh, BLM land. So there's not a lot of patrolling going on. You don't, you're not going to see police officers out that way, maybe one or two uh, Border Patrol. But, I mean, if you're a cartel guy, you kind of learn when they're there, when they're not there, what they're doing. Half these guys are sitting there playing, you know, Angry Birds or something on their phone, not even paying attention. So it's not that much of a surprise. But what that does, though, is it helps kind of narrow down for myself as a reporter to go out there. And I know that, that that spot that I've been to, I need to go look harder because, like they said, they're, they're finding these uh, cartel spotters, these little safe houses and things like that. So it's definitely something that I want to go and look into further. Right, yeah, because you're definitely uh, going up in the helicopter a lot. And that's what they're seeing is that these uh, there's caves and lookout spots, you know, thousands of feet up in the air um, that they're, they're spotters, cartel spotters, just looking for people. And I mean, you were there with these farmers who their land has basically been infiltrated. So not only do we have people coming across the border, but now also dangerous criminals or just drug drop-off point. Well, they keep talking about how they're going to build this huge wall or, you know, Trump saying this big wall is going to solve all of our problems. That's just not the case because all you have to do is dig a hole under it or go over. These guys, and not even that, these guys are really smart because last time I was in Arizona with Glenn Spencer, he showed me a lot of the areas on the border where essentially all you had to do was drive up with a truck they pull out their settling gas torches, cut holes in these fence, drive a truck over it, make their drop, come back, hook it up to a winch, pull the fence back up, and then re-weld it. And right. you'll see spots on the U.S. side where the Border Patrol will go after it's happened, and then they'll mark, you know, on this date, so-and-so cartel came through, uh, repatched it up, and they go back and reinforce it, which they don't right. really do anything. All they do and is they take it. it's about a year later that they're... It's yeah, I mean, it, it's completely and totally ridiculous, but, you know, I'm glad that they got this article out because that's going to further put eyes in that area because that's one of the things when I'm talking to my buddy who's a pilot who's going to be flying me around, that's one of the main spots that I was pointing out a week ago and the fact that they're now talking about it further going ahead, you know, that pushes the fact that I should be out there and looking into that even more. Right. Well, and it's, it's good to see that there are some other presidential candidates that are saying, okay, well, America seems to be really concerned about the condition at the border. Um, you know, but obviously, like you mentioned, they can build a tunnel and they have. They've been doing that for decades. We just had another story come out of an arrest of a, an underwater tunnel was found because there was a scuba diver and he brought like 55 pounds of cocaine, kilos yeah. of cocaine. And um, so, I mean, very crafty. And they, it's not like that's the only tunnel that's there. So what's a what's a fence going to do? But like Jesse Ventura said, but keep us in. Exactly. A fence is going to keep us in and it's going to also allow other people to come in as well and go back out. But, you know, when I was in Arizona, I had an opportunity to speak with Glenn Spencer. And one of the technologies he's come up with is a seismic uh, reading device that he places these rods down in the ground. And when someone approaches the border, it sends up this autonomous drone and it flies right over. It follows that path where the, the footprints are and then sends live footage back to him. And then they give that to the Border Patrol. You know, so he took that to Washington, D.C., and these guys were like, no, we don't want to use this technology. Yeah. It works. Right. Much they will so not effective. use something that works. They're putting up a border that's a beard. They do that just to make it look like we're doing something when really all we're doing is wasting millions of dollars. Right. These guys are going to get through On anyways. an ineffective fence. Absolutely. And I think you pointed out in one of your reports that they, they need that drug 
the drugs trafficking through because they, they make a lot of money off of that. Dark I mean, Alliance. Been, I mean. Yeah, at the Dark Alliance. And then check this out. So this is on the uh, coming out of the AP today. So now at busy crossings, pedestrians are going to need a passport to enter Mexico. OK, so uh, pretty much it's been if you're walking in, you can just kind of casually walk in. Yeah, well, long, now there's two lines. Yeah, as long as you I think it's you stay within 70 miles, something like that. I might be wrong, but somewhere yeah. in there. You stay within 70 miles of the border. You can walk in without a passport because I've done it before. Right. You can go over. And I mean, I did it at a border crossing as well. Not one of my yeah. my stunts where I go You're across. But ISIS. Yeah, you, <laughs> could, you could go through just with an ID. So that's interesting they're going to do that. Now. Yeah, well, you'll have to ch choose between two lines. There's a line for Mexicans. They can go through unchecked. And then a line for foreigners who are going to have to show a passport, fill out a form. If you're staying more than a week, you got to pay 322 pesos uh, for a six-month permit. But they point out that for Mexico, this is a step toward closing an escape route for American criminals who disappear into Mexico. Obviously, it could be retaliation for Trump saying that, you know, Mexico is only shipping in criminals here to the U.S. But look at that. I mean, that's that's what this is. It's all about this wall to keep us in. Now, any of us who might want to get out or could be put on the list considered a criminal, you know, but, but, but where but that shows go? how Mexico is being a little kind of, you know, they're being more proactive. Whereas we're like, all right, you know, bring us, bring us your criminals, you know, the bad people that you have. Whereas we do have a lot of criminals who do escape into Mexico. A lot of them were contractors, things like that, who went rogue. They go over, they start working with the cartels, they help out, they help do smuggling and all that. So, I mean, I think they're being pretty proactive in a sense. Our country just doesn't care. We let anybody in and we let these uh, people come in and rape people and then we just let them go again. Right. And a lot of times it is like hardened criminals so I don't really understand what the issue is. So what do you think about what some of the candidates are proposing about the border or about taking away birthright citizenship? Well, I heard uh, Dr. Ben Carson wants to use drones. So that's one of the things that's interesting. He said he wanted to use military drones. Now, I don't know how far and extent that goes. That's, uh, are we talking right. about arming these drones? Or are these just going to be uh, unarmed predator drones flying around? So that's something we have to look into uh, as far as he's concerned, and then we have Donald Trump as well, who wants to to build this wall and then kick everyone out, and you know, I I just don't see how that's going to work. That's going to be a huge waste of money. Right. I think there's uh, cheaper, better ways, like Glenn Spencer's idea of using the seismic reader, sending up the autonomous drones, the small ones, just to use as footage, so you can then you know notify the proper authorities to come in, detain these guys, find out what's going on, and if they're criminals, sending them back. Right. Well, there, I, there's some because there's a lot some of people who come over there. legally, you know, and yeah. I think it's a slap in the face. I've got a lot of friends, and a lot of kids. Yeah, I mean, I've got a lot of friends who joined the military. They came over from Mexico, served their country and they got their citizenship the right way. And I've asked them too over the past couple of years, I was like, what do you guys think about that? That a lot of these people come over illegally. Uh, they skate around the entire system. They don't do it right. And then they're allowed to essentially move freely where you had to go out and potentially die to have that right to be an American citizen. Right. And they're like, yeah, it's just like spit in my face. I mean, why set the standard if you're not going to use it? Right, absolutely. Well, I know you've got some more trips uh, planned to the border, so we'll definitely keep our eye on those reports. I know those are coming up very exciting, and I'm sure you're going to get some more hard-hitting footage like you did last time you were out there. Pretty unbelievable. Trump had to put it, <laughs> had to put that in one of his campaign speeches. I got to talk it. Yeah, wide open borders there. All right, well, thank you so much. And thank you all for tuning in tonight. That's it for the show. But